Hey scientists, let's take a moment to admire this beautiful rock surface that we're traveling through space on. This summer, my family and I are going to take a road trip to the Grand Canyon, and I am so amped up to see one of Earth's largest canyons. But how did this magnificent hole in the ground form? There are two ways the surface of the Earth can change. It can either be a constructive change that builds up the Earth's surface, or it can be a destructive change that tears down the Earth's surface. Volcanic eruptions, where liquid magma spews out from the Earth's crust, are constructive forces because oftentimes they make volcanic islands. Earthquakes, where tectonic plates are moving towards or away from each other, causing tremors, are destructive changes. They often end up tearing apart the Earth's surface. When earthquakes happen on one side of the world, tsunamis happen on the opposite side. Tsunamis are large waves that come and crash against the shore and scrape everything off back into the ocean. These are a very powerful deconstructive force. Landslides are another deconstructive force where a portion of rock, earth, or debris detach and move down slope land. Flooding is another example of a deconstructive change. All of these changes happen very rapidly, but let's take a look at some that have happened over thousands of years. Slow changes can either be weathering, erosion, or deposition. And all three of these can be caused by wind, water, and ice. Let's take a closer look at each one. Weathering is when rocks are broken down into smaller pieces. Weathering caused by wind happens when wind carries sand or small rock and it eventually breaks down the land or rocks and wears it away. Water weathers rock by carrying other small rocks and pounding them against one another until one or both break. Ice weathers rock down by moving into small cracks in its liquid form and then freezing and expanding to create a crack and then eventually break the rock. Erosion is when the weathered and broken pieces of rock are carried off and away. Wind erodes rock by blowing the pieces away. Water by carrying the pieces down river or in the ocean currents and waves, and giant land glaciers moving across the earth pick up a lot of dirt and move it like a snowplow. Deposition is the final step where all of this rock, dirt, and earth is deposited and arranged in some place new. The wind can carry dirt to new places. Water, rivers, and the ocean can deposit dirt onto new shores, banks, and beds. Ice glaciers deposit the dirt, earth, and rocks in new places as they move and also push it aside from the glacier's path. An easy way to remember is that weathering breaks it, erosion takes it, and deposition arranges it. Let's look at some examples and see if they were caused by wind, water, or ice. The Grand Canyon and most other canyons are formed over thousands of years by rivers weathering and eroding the riverbanks and riverbeds and then depositing the dirt elsewhere. This deposition causes deltas to form. Water can make some pretty interesting rock formations and natural bridges. Years of water runoff and dripping also create beautiful underground caverns and cave networks. Wind can weather and erode stones to create buttes and some ventifacts and then deposit the dirt to create sand dunes. Ice does this cool thing called wedging. Water seeps into the cracks of rocks, and then when it freezes, it breaks the rock. You can also see great valleys created by massive land glaciers. We now have a technology that can help us detect and predict some sudden changes in Earth's surface features. Seismographs measure the vibration in the Earth's surface and can predict both volcanoes and earthquakes. Infrared satellites can detect and send images of current weather patterns. And the Geographic Information System, or GSI, is a computer program that creates a map prediction of an entire floodplain showing the areas that are likely to get flooded, when the flood waters will arrive, and when the flood will crest. These can all help us better prepare for natural disasters. Let's put your knowledge to the test and look at a question. 